In this screencast, we're going to cover how to deploy a project onto AWS Elastic Beanstalk. AWS Elastic Beanstalk is an easy-to-use service for deploying and scaling web applications and services developed with Java, .NET, PHP, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go, and Docker on familiar servers such as Apache, Nginx, Passenger, and IIS. You can simply upload your code, and Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles the deployment from capacity provisioning, load balancing, auto-scaling, to application health monitoring. First, we install the AWS Elastic Beanstalk command line interface tool, which we'll be using to deploy our project in this screencast. Before we dive into using the AWS EB tool, we need to create credentials for the tool to use. The two entries required are access key ID and secret access key which we create in the Identity and Access Management service on the AWS console. First, let's create a user for Elastic Beanstalk to use. From the AWS console, navigate to Identity and Access Management, select Users, and click Create New Users. We're going to call ours Demo User. Make sure the box Generate an Access Key for each user is ticked, as we'll need this for our user. Here is our access key ID and our secret access key. Let's paste these credentials into the EB tool now. The EB tool will store these credentials on our local machine, which we can update manually in the future if we need to. Let's keep this window open for now so we can copy these values into our EB tool. Let's jump back over to the console. And as you can see, our tool is now available to use on our local machine. Let's navigate to the sample project directory to get EB initialized. For region, we're going to use the default, US West 2. If it's your first time running this application, the tool will ask for the access key ID and secret access key from the last step. We're going to input those now. So now we have our user, but it doesn't have any permissions yet, so we need to add some. On IAM, go to Groups put a group name, we're going to call ours Demo Group, and proceed. This next page lists what permissions you can add to the user. We want AWS Elastic Beanstalk Full Access, which, as the name implies, will give our group permission to access every resource in the Elastic Beanstalk scope. Tick the box and click Create Group. Now we'll add Demo User to the group, and we're done. From the AWS console, go to Elastic Beanstalk, select Create New Application, and for the application name, enter Node Project. Click Create Web Server, and then Create an IAM Role and Instance Profile. Our permissions are now created, and instead of proceeding here on the web console, we can safely close this window and go back to deploying our project from the terminal. EB sees our package.json file and asks us to confirm the project is Node.js. We select Yes here. And now we're ready to use EB for this project. This is how to deploy a Node.js project with a database onto Elastic Beanstalk. For this example, we'll be using MySQL, but any database type currently supported in Amazon RDS will work, as well as Amazon DynamoDB. You could also launch your own database server on EC2 and use that if you choose. Here is our sample Node.js project. To get started, we need to first make sure we have a Git repository in place. In addition to this, we'll need a valid package.json file present in the project's base directory. You will not need to include the actual dependency files in your project, in this case, node underscore modules, as long as it's defined in your package.json. Since we're using RDS for our database in this project, it's important that our database connection details use the node.js environment variables stated in the documentation. Elastic Beanstalk will automatically populate these values when our project is deployed, which provides us a valid database connection. 
For Node.js, you'll need to specify these values. Note, the environment variable names differ depending on the language you use for your project. Now we're ready to push our sample project. We're going to use the default environment name and the default DNS CNAME prefix. For our database username, let's leave the default EB root. For password, we're going to enter something over eight characters. Again, you won't need to hard code these credentials into your EB app. It'll pull them from the environment variable placeholders we inputted earlier. And now to deploy. This will push our latest Git revision onto EB and will output its creation status in the terminal window. Let's test our application's public web address to ensure everything is working correctly. Here's our app live on the web. We can see it deployed correctly and it's able to communicate with the database server we provisioned earlier. There may come a time when you need to view your project's log files in order to troubleshoot an issue. Elastic Beanstalk automatically keeps logs for the underlying EC2 instance that runs your project. You can view them in the AWS console on the Elastic Beanstalk page, or optionally have them stored in an S3 bucket associated with the project. To enable S3 logging for your project, open the AWS console EB page. Click Configuration. Click the gear icon on Software Configuration. Tick the Enable Log File Rotation to Amazon S3 box. And we're set. Logs will now output to our S3 bucket. Here we see our buckets, and this is the bucket that's associated with our Elastic Beanstalk instance. And here are logs for the project. Thanks for watching this video. For more information on AWS Elastic Beanstalk, visit aws.amazon.com slash elasticbeanstalk.